For Jasmine Niosh, tribal environmental activism isn't a passing trend, but a way of life. I grew up during a period of time when the Menominee were fighting against this mine called the Exxon Mine. That was very much like a David and Goliath story, where we had all these little tribes and a couple of environmentalists who were very scrappy, going up against one of the largest companies in the world, which is Exxon. And what felt like, honestly, even as a child, like felt like an unwinnable battle. When I was still very young, we came out on top of that. All the tribes in Wisconsin kind of banded together, along with all of our allies, and we were able to save that river. Uh, my name is Jasmine Niosh. I am a proud member of the Menominee Nation, uh, or the Menominee Indian Tribe of Wisconsin as we're more formally known. Um, I'm also a student here at the College of Menominee Nation where I'm pursuing my um, bachelor's in public administration. Back in 2008, Niosh had dropped out of college to work in restaurants and immerse herself in the art scene in Chicago. But everything shifted in the summer of 2016. The thing that changed that was, I think, just like for a lot of other people, was Standing Rock. The controversial Dakota Access Pipeline gained global attention after the Standing Rock Sioux launched a protest because of the danger to its water supply and cultural resources. The tribe was joined by hundreds of other tribal nations and non-native allies at the Standing Stone Camp in North Dakota. Watching those efforts was something that like really sort of changed my relationship to that struggle. Because all of a sudden, like, climate change stopped being theoretical. Like, environmental destruction stopped being theoretical. Even though it wasn't my tribe, those were people that could just as easily be my family, that could just as easily be my land. And that was something that, like, I understood needed to happen, and I needed to be involved in that. As the conflict escalated, Niosh was frustrated, but did not have the skills or experience to be of much help. I would, like, raise funds, I would give money, I would hand out flyers. But for some reason, for this, that didn't feel like enough. Um, it felt like I'd been like preparing like my whole life and then I got to like the moment of truth and I just couldn't do it. When the protests turned violent, Niosh realized there was only one solution that made sense to her, which was to go back to her home community and finish her education to be more effective in her advocacy. The great thing about the Menominee tribe is that like we've been doing this for thousands of years and eventually I don't know how I managed to like draw those two things together, but it was like, well, the forest, I think, is probably the best example that I can think of, of people who've been doing it the right way. And we've been doing it that way forever. And so if I want to find a system for people to emulate, that's the one to, that's the one to emulate. Which worked out really nice for me because that's my tribe. <laughs> During lunch at her job, Jasmine took out her phone enrolled at the College of the Menominee Nation and told her mother she was moving back home to finish her education. I think there is a part of us as Indigenous people, as something that my mom knew when I was young that it took me a few years to figure out, is that I think like there's some part of you that always wants to come back home. And I'd always thought that that home was Chicago, and it wasn't. It never quite felt right until I got back here. And I think that's a, a unique aspect of tribal colleges, the, the humble beginnings that um, we all come from, but also the dedication of the, the people at work here in service to our students, but to our, our broader community, just like all of the other tribal colleges in the movement. Um, as a tribal college, one of the, the main things we focus on is understanding our, our tribal community needs. Before becoming president of CMN, Chris Caldwell served as the director of the Sustainable Development Institute for seven years. The institute was established as a part of the college's mission to continue the tribe's work in natural resource management and sustainability, for which they have become global leaders. So we're all working together to help each other move forward in that journey, and it's all focused around sustainability, sustainable development, those topics, and not necessarily from the, the mainstream understanding, but really exploring what does that mean in a tribal college context, in a tribal community setting. One of SDI's current projects is working to identify wild and edible food sources on the reservation. To assist them in their work, the tribe's archaeologist mentors SDI's student interns in identifying ancient plant species used as a food source by the tribe. My name is Jeff Greenell. 
I'm a member of the Menominee Tribe of Wisconsin. Um, my Menominee name is Pamapame, which means seen going by. The interns like Jasmine and, and the others have begun work on these agricultural areas. So I volunteered my time at first to help them understand some of the ancient ways of maintaining and establishing these agricultural areas. Essentially what we're doing is we're looking for all of the edible plants in the Menominee Forest that grow here uh, wild and naturally and historically. Uh, we are looking at um, a bunch of anthropological uh, studies of the reservation that have been done. Um, people who have like come here and like talked to like old Menominees about uh, the plants that are here and like what the uses are for them. For students like Jasmine, the expertise offered by her tribe's college was a perfect fit for her educational goals. My plan is to go for, after I leave here with my Bachelor's of Public Administration, I'm going to try to get my Juris Doctorate in Environmental Law, um, as well as a Master's Degree, either a Master of Science or a Master of Public Administration in um, Environmental Science and Policy, um, and eventually a Doctorate. Um, I already actually have my dissertation kind of picked out, uh, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But for the time being, Niosh is committed to learning from the forest where she grew up. The thing that became very clear was that they needed folks, not just like at Standing Rock, but in general, indigenous people need someone who can be that translation point. People who can be lawyers, who can like advocate for the tribe, with the tribe, but more importantly, it had to be of the tribe. Like we needed our own people to go into these spaces, know how to raise hell, but raise hell within that system. Ultimately, like that's my white whale. That's what I want to chip away at. And so the only way that I can think of to do that is if I like get my master's degree and like really learn the science, like just know the science like really, really well, understand the policy process quite thoroughly, uh, but then also understand the law aspect of it, which governs so much of what we do and has largely not been written by people like me, largely has been written to control people like me. <laughs> so if I can get in there and figure out how to work within that system, how to change that system, and how to make that system work better for us, that's, uh, that's the goal.